As Ohio State prepares for tomorrow's game against Hawaii, the National Football Foundation announces next week Jim Tressel will be saluted on Ohio State's campus in honor of his election to the College Football Hall of Fame. Tressel will also receive a similar salute at Youngstown State as he's being inducted for his coaching success at both schools. Mark has more on the Buckeyes home opener. Braxton Miller made his return to the field on Monday night and what a return it was. Two highlight reel worthy touchdowns including a spin move that still has everyone talking. And after missing all of last season, the emotions got to the fifth year senior in the post game locker room. You know it was devastating um, what happened last year to my shoulder and stuff like that and you know all the emotion just hit me you know just being back up there with the guys and you know making plays and just high five with everybody, you know, on the sidelines and stuff like that. It just felt like I ain't miss, a, I ain't miss a beat, so I just felt blessed, and um, I just, I just felt like I just want to do it again. <laughs> Which is very emotional for him. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy the way he came out there and played. I know it's more to come, and he's definitely gonna have a big year. With the Virginia Tech win behind them and a seemingly easy schedule in front of them, the Buckeyes may face more challenges off the field than on it. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think this will be a test for complacency. I mean, this team we have we have a certain attitude and we have a certain culture that we've established here. That we go out there and we play every day. I mean, to compete. Just guard against everything, man. I mean, this is nuts. It's. I guess you have guards to guard the guards, right, or guard the player. But that's our. You know, we go nine strong, and uh, I hold every coach accountable. And you watch for indicators how they're slipping. And I said that in the summer. One is academics, others is uh, work ethic on the practice field or weight room, and any social issues that you're dealing with. Those are three indicators that we watch very closely. And uh, if I see it, the good thing is if you slip up, there's some pretty good players here. That means the next guy's pretty good too. And the next guy at the quarterback position, JT Barrett, no one is ruling out the captain to start tomorrow. I don't know. Um, I do know. I should. Uh, head coach saying, I don't know. Boy, that probably sounds bad. Uh, I know JT had one rush for 40 yards and one pass for a touchdown and was engaged, was leading the team, uh, knew uh, he wasn't going to take the first snap and talk to the team before they went out. Um, you know, there might be packages that I'm going to put in. We talked about that today with the quarterbacks with maybe JT. So I, I don't know. It's, uh, they both have to be on call and ready to go. And I've never been in a situation like that, that uh, they're both pulling for each other. It's the damnedest thing I've ever seen. It's really cool to see that. Buckeyes set to take on Hawaii for the first time ever. Our Buckeye insider Mike Miller joins us now. And Mike, you know, oftentimes with college football, when they schedule, you'll schedule a home-and-home -home series. One mm -hmm. team will come to one stadium, and then the next year, a couple years later, will go to the other. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, Ohio State has no plans to travel to <laughs> Hawaii, although Darn. Urban Meyer did say he wouldn't be opposed to a trip <laughs> yeah. to Honolulu for, for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. But this is a Hawaii team that's going to come into Columbus on Saturday afternoon. And... They did get the win over Colorado mm -hmm. opening up on Thursday, or last Thursday, a close game at the end that the Hawaii had an early lead and kind of rolled from there. But mm -hmm. it's still a Hawaii team with some question marks only because they've changed up their defense. They've made some twerks to their, tweaks to their offense, so it's not quite a Hawaii team you can prepare for based on what they've done in years past. Yeah, that's, it. that's excellent, Mark. That is what has happened. They've changed. I think what most catches my attention is the shift away from Norm Chow, his pro-style offense, which was so successful, as we all know, for a number of years at Southern California. With that, a more balanced approach offensively, which I think is also an insertion of some toughness for that Rainbow Warrior program. And as much as anything, that's what they need. They need to find some physicality again to compete in the Mountain West, much less somebody like Ohio State. And a lot of the changes offensively is going to a little bit more of a spread look, which is something mm -hmm. that the Ohio State defense certainly sees all the time against uh, the Ohio State offense in practice. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, anything that the, the Rainbow Warriors is going to do is necessarily going to throw Ohio State for a loop, but a little bit more balanced uh, for Hawaii, a plus for them, although let's don't take too much out of that victory against uh, Colorado. Apparently it was awful weather conditions. I believe there was three Colorado turnovers that were quite beneficial uh, to the Rainbow Warriors. So a win, yes, rare for them in their opener, rare for them at all, uh, but let's don't overrate that success they had against Colorado. Offensively, the Rainbow Warriors rely on a couple of mainlanders. Their, their quarterbacks mm -hmm. originally from Connecticut went to USC, transferred to Hawaii. Their star running back is actually a Central Ohio kid, a kid from Columbus. And 
We've seen over the, over the oh, years, yeah. kids from Columbus who play against Ohio State oftentimes save their best games to show the Buckeyes what they were missing. Yeah, you bet. That's a great storyline, quite frankly. Paul Harris, a young fellow from Marion Franklin, that's Columbus City League football, winds up out there in Hawaii. I think he transferred initially from somewhere. Nevertheless, he was one of the keys for the Hawaiian success in their first game, and he'll be all jacked up to bring it back to Columbus. Uh, I'm certain of that. And you've got a good running back that gives you a horse you can ride a little bit. Now the Buckeye offense against a very good Virginia Tech defense on Monday night. At times it was kind of a start and stop. I don't think there are some folks that probably thought that the offense didn't necessarily perform as well as it could have. Passing game wasn't necessarily where they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Yet at the end of the day, they had over 500 yards of offense against a very good Virginia Tech defense. Does this Hawaii defense have any chance of slowing down Ohio State's offense? Mark, I don't think it does, to be quite honest with you. I think the Ohio State offense, frankly, slowed itself down, and that's to take nothing away from the toughness that Virginia Tech certainly shown. As much as anything for Ohio State, it was adjustment uh, to Virginia Tech staying largely with that bear, that eight, nine-man front that they were crowding Ohio State with, stuffing Ezekiel Elliott. The Buckeyes certainly with the big plays, but the adjustments they made into the second half, the Ohio State offense then exposed to themselves all their weapons, and I can't imagine that Hawaii is going to bring to the table defensively what Virginia Tech did. Buckeyes did not get back to Columbus till about 3 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, so it's a very short week, a quick tur turnaround to get ready for Hawaii. The fact that they're going to be a big favorite against the Warriors, the fact they've got this quick turnaround, is, is that the biggest concern for Ohio State going into this game? It probably is, to be by, quite honest with you. But what overwhelms all of that is the home opener, first game of the year at Ohio Stadium. And for those many of our uh, viewers and others that have been to Ohio Stadium over the years, they fully know the electricity, the excitement, first home game for the last year's national champions. I think it'll overcome that tired out effect that may exist. But you're right, just four days to prepare, that's a pretty narrow window. All right, thank you very much, Mike Miller from WIMA, our Buckeye Insider. Of course, much more on the game coming up a Sunday morning. But for now, let's send it back to Andy.